That's right, we're back working on the Rockman again, or should I call it the Mockman? My little headphone amplifier as an homage to Tom Schultz of Boston. Hey, what's happening, guys? What you're looking at here is a, uh, an ultra fast recapping of a video I did back in August of my Rockman version 3, which is my take on uh, Tom Schultz, the guitar player and uh, electronics genius from Boston's. Rockman headphone guitar amplifier. We had it sounding pretty good last time, and it was lacking one thing, which I had intended to put in last, and I did, and that is the compression circuitry, which Dr. Quincy has uh, helped out with graciously. All right, so here's the new circuit, which is pretty much the same as the old circuit. We can... Uh, of course divide it into sections okay so here's our new section we'll come back to this that is the compressor section this is our echo slash chorus section this is our signal input and selector section and this is our op amp now don't forget we also have two op amps here that we can make use of if we need more amplification or some overdrive or something along those lines but we're not really using them right now so the section that i wanted to talk to you about today is of course this this is the compressors compressor section and if you look here the signal comes in through here and it is split so when this half is ac it's going to come up through here it's going to parallel between these two resistors this capacitor is going to go through here and out, and that should give us a little bit of compression. Um, if you look here closely, you can see we kind of have a, uh, a rectifier going on. But I'm not that up on this audio technology stuff, so if you know more, go ahead and chime in. So this is our, our uh, low-pass filter 1 and 2 out. And that's where we're going to the compressor. And then the compressor comes back in right here to our output pin. So hopefully this will be okay here with the bypass. And if I had to, I guess I could put a, uh, can't really draw. I don't have my drawing pad out today. I could put a diode there. Anyway, so that's what it is. And uh, let's go put one together and see how it does. So before we put this together, I want to tell you a little bit about PCBWay, the sponsor for this video and for many videos on my channel. I've been using them for years. They do excellent service. One of the things they offer is PCB design services. So if you are not inclined to make your own designs, you're worried about trying to do it yourself, well, they can do it for you. They have schematic diagram design. Our team consists of experienced engineers, FPGA senior engineers. They can do your PCB design and layout. Whatever you need, PCB Way has got you covered. So check the link down below, and they can help you out with whatever your needs are. All right. I got the boards back. Here they are. Or the minimum number, you know, five of them. They look pretty good. Now, I didn't show you my normal, how I lay out the board, because I just took the old layout, and then I just shoehorn components in here wherever I could, so it ain't beautiful. But if everything works out for this, our next step is going to be moving on to <clears throat> putting it in a board that will fit into a standard stomp box housing and putting one of those big old chunky bypass switches on there. But I'm going to get started soldering this up we'll start with the smallest things on the board and that in this case will be the resistors we've got one two three four five six 
1K resistors, 110K resistor. I forget what that one is. I'll have to look it up. All right, so if we get a close-up look here of the board, if it will focus, there is R8 and there's R9. R8 and R9 are from our compression circuitry. This is 1.5K and this one is 100K. So I'm going to get started soldering these guys up and uh, we'll go from there. these resistors in there all right I'm gonna solder this kind of old school face down you know the weight of the board and pressing down on it will help keep things in place at least that's the thinking. But I've done it before and, you know, seems to be a viable option. So we'll find out. All right, I'll get those trimmed and we'll get back and do all the one case. We'll get these ones in and They will be the next to get soldered up, so you don't have to watch me stick all these in the board. When I was going through getting all the parts I needed before I started the video, I realized I'm down to my last $23.99 IC, so I'm going to have to order some more of those. Because if this thing keeps going well, yeah, it's cool. I'm going to be very happy with it. Nice relaxing soldering for a Saturday afternoon. Next up on the fun train, diodes. These are just a standard silicon junction diodes. And of course, you know, they are one-way electrical valves. So we want to make very certain that we put them in correctly. Footprints just, just a hair too small. We'll get them all in there, no worries. Looks like I missed a resistor leg there too during my trimming. That's right, I'm a little scatterbrained. Go off, you know, I'm doing one thing. My brain's working on something entirely different. Hate it when that happens. And it does happen. So we get all these diodes in here. I know some places in the country are already having snow. But it's 70 degrees here today. So that's nice. All right. Let's solder them bad boys in. 
Remember, diodes have thicker leads than resistors in general. So they're going to take either a little bit more heat or a little bit more time. No, I mean, not much. We're talking half a second to a second, but more is still more. So just keep that in mind. And again, remember, it's not heat. No, it, it is kind of heat that is the enemy of these. But it's heat and time together that ends up damaging uh, our silicone components. So if you need to solder something that's requiring more heat than it normally does, you know, apart than you're normally used to, you are better off to increase your heat and decrease your dwell time and just keep your time with the heat on everything as low as possible. Trust me, you'll be better off. All right. Capacitor time. And all these little one of you guys here. These are the biggest uh, multi-layer ceramic capacitors that I have. I don't know if they make bigger ones. They may. But I don't know about it. So, If anything bigger than this, then I'm forced to go with, you know, electrolytic capacitors to do the job. And there's nothing wrong with them. Except, you know, eventually electrolytic capacitors will go bad. These could too, but they are less likely than electrolytics to really, you know, screw the pooch. So just keep that in mind. Polyester capacitors are also fine like this for audio type work. All right, now let's see how slick I really am. That wasn't too bad. And the reason I'm doing this here without anything like a soldering frame or helping hand, whoops, lost one, or even um, blue tack, is that I just want to demonstrate that you don't need all that stuff. I mean, when I first started soldering stuff when I was, you know, in my teens, we didn't have any of this stuff available my parents house and get these ones in that fell out I used to tape stuff down to the board and whoopsies wedge it in there however you could it wasn't until I took a machining class at uh, Allegheny Community College I'm sorry the Community College of Allegheny County CCAC that I learned what this is called fixturing <laughs> Not that it matters, but I didn't even know what it was called. And it's hard to find information on something if you don't even know what its name is. At least that has been uh, my experience. It's especially hard to look for something when you don't know what its name is. How do you search for something when you're unaware of its name? Back in 2015, I was dating this woman who was an artist, and she was doing this, uh, I don't know, some sort of vinyl cutout decals over a mirror, and they needed to be smoothed down. So what I was looking for was like a hard rubber carpet roller type device, but smaller. But how do you, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what to call it. So I'm starting to look for hard rubber rollers. You gotta be careful with your search terms, you know. They can lead you to some unexpected places. Anyway, it turns out what I was looking for was called an art roller. But, you know, I didn't know that up front, so it, it, uh, it did take me a bit of time to figure that all out. All right, we got more capacitors. 
C10 and 11. I'll have to look up their values. All right, we get our chiclets in. And we're getting, we're getting about halfway done. This is the point where I generally start to get nervous. Is it going to work? I mean, it worked last time, but then I made changes, so I hope it works. But you never know, right? That looks pretty good. So we'll solder them the rest of the way in. Come on. We'll get her trimmed out. All right. Let's go down to the bottom. And we'll do our switch. Now, like I said, I'm not really using any tools here. No uh, basic assembly stuff. So, just like when I was a kid, man. Go up to where my mom kept her totes full of Christmas decorations and wrapping. And get some of her Christmas wrapping tape. Make sure she doesn't find out about it, though. Oh, here's a good story for you guys. Back in the 80s, early 80s, we had a uh, big uh, top opening, top loading, I guess you call it, freezer in the basement. And, you know, my parents, in an attempt to save money, would buy bulk food and stuff like that. Well, during the summer, my mother would bake cookies for Christmas time. She would make these cream-filled pastries called Ladyfingers that my sister loved. And these cheesecakes on a vanilla wafer that I loved. So, my sister and I would go down to the basement, which was like one of the areas that we played in the house. And, uh, yeah, we'd eat them frozen cookies right out of the freezer. And then December would come around, and my mother would be getting ready to put together some cookie platters for her friends or whatever, you know, whoever was getting them. And, uh, you know, we'd hear the screaming start from the basement. Who the hell ate all the cookies? Well, it was me and my sister. And I'd do it again. It was one of my favorite childhood memories was sneaking Christmas cookies. One of my other childhood memories of the basement was taking apart my dad's tools to figure out how they worked. Unfortunately, I was in my mid-twenties until I could reassemble things so that they worked again. So yeah, I went through a couple of the old man's drills and saber saws. Couldn't call it a jigsaw. If I called it a jigsaw, I'd get yelled at. Because a jigsaw came up through the base of a table whereas a saber saw was a handheld device that you cut through but most people just call it a jigsaw all those funny childhood memories think about now that you know I am the oldest male in the family I guess I'd call me the patriarch Christ, I'm only 53 years old how did that happen I hope that Blake will have, you know, great childhood memories like that, too. Like, I carried on the traditions, like my father's family, and he had nine brothers and a sister. They had a tradition where somebody would wrap a series of nesting boxes with, like, a, you know, a piece of candy as the, your final prize when you get to the inside and, you know, stuff like that. So I would do that to Blake when he was younger. He got a kick out of it. 
like we'd start with a you know almost like a refrigerator box and inside would be a smaller box and inside that would be an even smaller box and they were all oh man they were taped with that uh strapping tape that has the fiberglass strands in it and duct tape and, and just you know as tough as i could possibly make it for the poor kid and he spent an hour and a half cutting through layer upon layer of packaging for a pen knife <laughs> that's me chaotic evil dad but you know like i said i hope those are uh, some memories that he continues with his family one day just slam my head into the light here above the desk i'll show you i'll show you one second okay so i'm gonna loosen up the camera frame here watch this where's that there it is right there so that is maybe a foot above what we're soldering and i am leaning my head over the camera screen here trying to see what the heck i'm soldering And just doinked my head right into the light. Oh well. No harm, no foul. It's just my head. Nothing useful there. We should be about getting down to the end of this guy now. I think we have to put in our our op amp and then just our headers, and we're we're rocking and rolling and ready to roll. We use the same amp we used last time, which is my uh, hand-wired Fender Champ clone that I built called the Happy Bear. It's 5 amp, or 5 watt, all tube amp. Very nice little amp. This was taking forever, so I just went ahead and finished it up while you weren't looking. <clears throat> but there you can see the whole thing. Input, output, engaged, bypassed. 9 volt DC. White's positive, black is ground. So, all we got to do now is uh, hope it works, right? Alright, so we're using the same amp as last time. Let's get it, everything connected here, huh? So, we need out. Of the Rockman into the amp and out of the guitar into the Rockman, and then we need power. Hook up our ground first. Alright, we'll set that there. We got nine volts going. Let me grab the guitar. Alright, got the guitar. Today's guitar is my EVH Wolfgang. Let's uh power up the amp here. Give it a few seconds to come to life. So here's our clean sound. Now, so it's a bypass switch, and we should get our Rockman type sound. Same thing, that's just an A chord. So like if I play that uh, Def Leppard Hysteria sound, here it is with the Rockman, or the Mockman. Okay. and then we can switch it off and play the same thing for you again clean
So you can see it's kind of a subtle change, but it's definitely there. And I like it. And I think we're ready to go to the next level. So there she is. And there's a train. <laughs> I think it sounds good and I think we're ready to go to the next level. Which as I said is to put it in a stomp box enclosure. Get the big clicky switch to go on there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring the video. Big thanks to the patrons. And big thanks to you for watching it. That's it. I'm out. Peace.